so I'm going to be talking about programming for humans, uh, because the actual consumer of most of your code is humans. Um, so I'm going to be talking about how to apply some of the ideas from user experience design uh, to API design and to writing your code. Uh, so I'm Emily Hyland. I'm a senior software engineer here at New Relic. Uh, I work mostly in Ruby and JavaScript. Um, so I'm going to start us off sort of who, who these ideas are for, um, what are some of the terms I'm going to use, why I think applying these ideas is a good idea, uh, when to apply it, and how to kind of apply some of this thinking. Um, I'm going to be talking mostly sort of abstractly, I'm not, it's not really a series of steps to follow, but just sort of a new way of thinking about your code. So who is this for? Look, this is really an idea for everybody. Um, even if you're not writing gems that other people are going to be pulling into their projects, all of the code that you write is for people. Um, even internal code, that's for the other people working on that project to read later. And even side projects, because six months from now you is essentially a different person as far as reading your code. So what are some of the terms here? Um, so when I say an API, most of the time you're going to think about um, the remote calls exposed to a consumer. So like a re the REST API that your app publishes, or maybe, maybe a gem, uh, the external API that that produces. Uh, but I'm actually including really any classes, methods, and variables in your code base. These are all bits of API that you're defining because you're going to need to use them somewhere else. Um, even your private methods, even the naming of variables inside of a method that will never be exposed outside. Um, and, and user experience here is, is, I'm talking about the subjective experience of using the software. How easy it is to use and how you feel when you're using it. Um, I think Ruby is a great example of, of software that is designed with a good user experience. Ruby is a pleasant language to use and that's why a lot of us use it. Um, and another really useful concept here is that the idea of an affordance. Um, so this is the, the qualities or properties of an object that define its uses or make it clear how it can and sh or should be used. So that's how you can look at a different shaped handle on a door and know whether you should push it or pull it. It, it sets your expectations. And so when you're defining methods on an object when you're writing code, you're very explicitly adding you're putting that handle on the object, and how you define that handle is going to tell people whether they should push or pull. So why do I think that using these ideas to think about code is valuable? Um, I think one of the really useful things it does for us is it, gives, it lets you reuse knowledge. Um, when you have a consistent interface on your code, when that pull handle always looks like a pull handle, you already know what to expect as soon as you use a method. Uh, you know, once, once you've learned enumerable in Ruby, once you know how to use each on an array, you have a pretty good guess what it's going to do the first time you try it on a string. And so it lets you use that knowledge that you've already built. Uh, it's also easier to discover what something can do. When, when it, you look at the methods you, on something and you see descriptive names, you know what's possible instead of just, you know, method one, method two, method three, and then you go reference the documentation. Um, but the reason that I like thinking about this particular approach, instead of lots of other ways of getting at similar ideas, is that I think it's it taps into empathy and into personal connections, which is really a different part of your brain than you usually use most of the time when you're writing software. Um, you're going to accomplish a lot of the same goals that you would by following certain kinds of design patterns and best practices, but those are very abstract. And this helps to connect you to why you're doing this and how, how following those patterns is going to affect the other humans who are using your code. So when, when do you want to apply this thinking? The most obvious time, but also in some ways the hardest time, is while you're writing code. You have to really remind yourself to step back and reconsider your approach and think about what it would look like to a new person coming to it. It's really easy when you're in the guts of writing something, you already know exactly what you mean. And so you don't think, what would this word mean to someone else? A really easy time to do this is during code reviews. 
Um, if you're not doing code reviews, I guess you can ignore this, but you should really be doing code reviews. Um, this is the time when you're already in exactly the right frame of mind. You're looking at code that's new to you, and you're evaluating it. Is this, is this code that I want to keep using and maintaining and owning? And you can, you can really think about, when you see a method in that code review, what, looking at the method signature, what, what do I think this is going to do? And then you read the body of the method and see if that really is what it does. And, and you can really try to validate those expectations and make sure it makes sense. Another good time is when you're choosing your tools. Um, look at the conventions and documentation of the libraries that you're thinking about using. And you can, you can see whether they're going to be a pleasure to use or whether you're going to be fighting those tools the whole time because you're never going to know quite what it's going to do. So the things that you can do to try and follow this pattern, to try and remind yourself. Um, try to follow conventions, uh, whether that's the conventions of the code base you're working in or the language you're using. Um, if you're creating a thing in Ruby that represents a list, you could have that thing implement enumerable. And you can build on top of all of that, people, all of that existing behavior and let people reuse that knowledge. Um, and also try to step back and imagine the user who's using your code. When they come to your code, what are they trying to do? They're not here to marvel at how clever you were. They're not here to read it just for fun. They, they have a goal, and there's something they're trying to accomplish, and how can you help them accomplish that goal as easily as possible? And then another little trick that I think is sometimes useful to get in the right mindset is to write your readme before you start writing code. Because at that point, you're not thinking about the implementation. You're thinking about what the goal is. And so you're going to think about this more holistically. Um, and what methods are going to let people really express what they're trying to accomplish. So that takes us through the basic idea here of, of programming as interface design, as user experience design. And this is a, an idea that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, and an approach I've been taking, but part of what really helped me to crystallize this idea um, and to put it in, in the terms of design uh, is, and I'm going to leave you with this quote from Matt, the creator of Ruby. Um, programmers feel joy when they can concentrate on the creative side of programming. So Ruby is designed to make programmers happy. I consider a programming language as a user interface, and so it should follow the principles of a user interface. Thanks.